Hi, my name is Lily and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my video summarising every single series that I have currently started and need to finish. So, I am a bit of a nightmare for starting series and not finishing them. So I thought I would start tracking this in a better way. I was trying to track it in Notion, but I was finding that I wasn't going there and updating things. And I'd also in the Notion page I was using, trying to track it, including the books I have bought but haven't started that series yet, which just was so chaotic. So I now have a spreadsheet page on my reading tracker spreadsheet so it's a different tab uh, tracking all of my series that I need to finish so this only includes the series where I've actually read at least one book from the series and I have a few different metrics that I track there so currently I have 66 active series. Of those 66 series, I've actually started two in 2023. So I'm trying to track each year how many I add to this list. So far this year, I haven't finished any series, but I haven't DNF'd any either. So, so far it's only increased, but it is only February, so I have time. So of those 66 series, I will also say 14 of them are what I call on hold. On hold means I have read all of the books currently available to read and I'm just waiting for the final books in the series or future books to be released. So I'm going to go through all 66. I'm going to try not to talk too long about all of them, but hopefully this will be interesting. I will be going through them in alphabetical order and if I can easily get to one of the books in the series to show it to you I will hold it up but otherwise I will not. So first up we have The Adventure Zone. This is the graphic novelization of the McElroy Brothers podcast by the same name which is the three brothers and their dad playing D&D. So this is actually on hold. The fourth, I think, no, the fifth book in this series will come out later this month and I will probably read it immediately. I don't know if there's going to be another book after that. I assume we will find out at the end of the book because usually they put like there will be another book at the end of a graphic novel. So we'll see. But if that is the last book, then I'll probably read it immediately and finish out that series this year. So the next one is the After Oscar series by Lucy Lennox. This is actually another on hold series. So I have read all of the available books and I'm just waiting for her to release more books. This one, she doesn't seem to be releasing as regularly as her other series. So I'm not sure what's happening there. They were supposed to release, I think one or two of them in 2022 and she didn't. Um, but this is a male male romance series. So they're kind of standalones, but they do link to each other. So characters will know each other from book to book, but you don't need to read them in order. I have read the first three books in this series and I'm just waiting for books four and five to come out. Then we have the Alex Stern trilogy by Lee Bardugo, the first one being Ninth House. So this will go on hold soon for me. I have read Ninth House but I haven't read book two which is Hellbent so I need to read that to then put the series on hold while we wait for book three. This is an adult dark academia horror style book and it is about Alex Stern who is part of this secret society monitoring group. They monitor the secret societies of Yale University as they complete their blood magic rituals and in book one a girl appears on the campus dead and Alex believes that the secret society had something to do with it and decides to try and investigate. Next is the Bergman Brothers series and now you may be thinking that if you've watched this channel for a while you'll know that I have actually read all of the available books because I read them as soon as they come out. This is my favourite romance series and Chloe Lee is one of my favourite authors but it's not on hold for me anymore because I have an arc for the next book which I can't remember the name of because they're all very similar. It's If Only You. So this one is Ziggy's book. I need to read it so I can put the series on hold once again. We're not expecting the final book until next year. But also Chloe Lee's has hinted that there may be some kind of epilogue form book for all of the characters after the end of their stories. So this could go on hold for me even longer. This is so weird because I have a lot of on hold books at the start of the alphabet, but the next series is also on hold bizarrely and that is the bloom duology by kevin panetta this is another graphic novel series i think there's only going to be two books i don't even think the second book was originally planned but he has now got a sequel in the works i believe it's coming out either this year or next year so hopefully i'll be able to finish it when it comes out so this is a contemporary romance about a local family bakery where the son was kind of expected to take over the bakery but doesn't want to he wants to be in a band and so his parents agree to hire someone to work in the bakery and he starts to fall in love next is one that i definitely can finish and should finish and that is the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. Here is book one from the Illumicrate editions, The Duke and I. I have read the first four in this series. 
and that means I still have four more to go because there is one book for each of the eight Bridgerton children. So if you didn't know, the Bridgerton series is about the eight Bridgerton children. It's set in, I think, a Victorian era England? I may be wrong, but it, it, it's a Regency, <laughs> Regency romance series where each book follows a different child of the vast Bridgerton family and their romantic exploits. This one has been really up and down for me because the different books do contain different tropes. So some of them I've loved, some of them have been kind of eh. So I'm really looking forward to seeing like which books continue to be good for me and which ones I don't like as much. Then we have the Bright Fall series by Ashley Herring Blake. This series includes Delilah Green Doesn't Care and Astrid Parker Never Fails. So I have read the first book, didn't really enjoy it, but I'm intrigued to read the second book because I liked the writing, I just didn't like Delilah in the first book. I found her character very annoying. So I want to give it another chance and see if it's just that I didn't like the character or is this author just going to not be for me. So at the moment the series isn't DNF but I will be deciding after Astrid's book whether or not to read the third book. It's not a given that I'm going to be reading the third one. Then we have The Carl's Duology by Hank Green. So that is an absolutely remarkable thing and a beautifully foolish endeavour. So I have read the first book. I didn't love it, but I was intrigued enough to want to know what happens next. For me, it is honestly the writing style I didn't love. It was very dense and technical and I didn't dislike the main character, but she wasn't totally intriguing to me. So this one is about a giant monolith appearing. I think it's in New York City and the main character is the first person to discover it and she uploads this YouTube video of her kind of mockingly reporting on it and she then becomes kind of the key person as more of these appear around the world and they appear to be some kind of alien form and start to interact with human life. Then we have the Cassidy Blake trilogy by V.E. Schwab. This is V.E. Schwab's middle grade series. It is kind of a horror but middle grade horror so it's kind of more spooky and uh, ghosty than actual horror um, and it also leans a bit fantasy as well. I have read books one and two, I only have the third book to read, I'm not sure if I have it on my physical TBR because I think the other two I may have read on script but it's one that I do want to finish soon because I don't want to forget too much about books one and two before I pick up the third one. So this one is about a young girl who has a near-death experience and after this she is rescued by a ghost and is then able to see other ghosts and it's about her exploration of how these ghosts interact with her daily life, especially as her parents are TV ghost hunters and claim to be able to see ghosts but she knows they can't. And so they're exploring different parts of the world that are apparently particularly haunted, but she's the one that can actually see the ghosts. Then we have Check Please, the duology by Ungozi Yokazu. This is a contemporary with a romance element to it, but more contemporary focused about a vlogger on a university hockey team in America, I think, not Canada, but I could be wrong, um, and about his life after he joins his hockey team. The next one is quite seasonal, so who knows if I'll actually finish this one anytime soon. That is the Christmas Stories series by Tom Fletcher. So this is a middle grade fantasy about a young boy who's a wheelchair user who writes his letter to Santa asking for a dinosaur. And Santa actually does have a dinosaur in the North Pole, but he can't send this dinosaur to the child. So he makes a plushy version of the dinosaur, but the dinosaur decides to swap places with the plushy and the little boy gets a real dinosaur for Christmas. It's really, really cute and really funny and I loved the first book so I do need to read the rest of the series but because it's seasonal I kind of really want to read it at Christmas time and then Christmas time comes around and I forget about it so hopefully this is the Christmas that I finally remember to read the other two books in this trilogy. Then I have the Chronicles of Alice series by Christina Henry. The first book is Alice. So this is a dark horror fantasy retelling of Alice in Wonderland in which Alice is in a mental asylum. Then one day there's a fire that allows her and her neighbour the Hatcher to escape from the asylum. She begins to go on this journey to search the truth about what happened to her that made her end up into the asylum. So I've read the main prose books for these. This book one is Alice and then the second one is Red Queen. I think it's Red Queen. Um, and then there is Looking Glass, which I believe is like a short story collection of different parts from the world of Alice. And that is the book that I have left to read. Then we have the Conqueror Saga trilogy by Kirsten White. The first book is And I Darken. And this is the only one that I've read. This is a historical fantasy slash 
historical fiction book and it is young adult. This one is about um, two siblings, Lada and Radu, who are wrenched away from their homeland to be raised by the Sultan in his empire, the Ottoman Empire. And Lada absolutely hates it there while Radu kind of begins to consider it his home. And she wants to go back and become the princess and ruler of her kingdom, but Radu wants to stay. And she despises everything about the Ottoman Empire until she meets uh, Mehmed, who is the Sultan's heir. And she finally believes that she's found someone who she can put her trust into. So this is unusual for me because it's kind of political heavy, but I loved this first book and I've actually reread it because I was then going to read the other books and for some reason I then didn't. <laughs> But I do really need to finish this one because I adored the first book and I really need to see where this is going. The next one is no surprise, that is A Court of Thorns and Roses. It is another on hold one because I have read all the books currently available but we are expecting two more from this series. So this is a series about a young girl named Feyre who accidentally kills a member of the Fey and gets taken to their world to live out her punishment basically as an exile in the fairylands. And that's as much as I want to say because I can't remember what spoilers because it's been a long time since I was a first time reader of this series. <laughs> Similarly, we have the Crescent City series by Sarah J Maas, which is also on hold. I have read the two books available and it is going to be a three book trilogy. So this one is about a woman whose best friend is murdered in a very brutal way. And a few years later, after when she is just trying to get by, just trying to cope with life, the thing that killed her best friend seems to be resurfacing and she is kind of drawn into the investigation to find out what it is. Not my favourite Sergio Mar series but the ending of book two means I'm going to be reading book three. <laughs> if you know you know uh, and that, that's all I really have to say because I can't remember what else is spoilers for this series. Then we have the Curse Breaker series by Bridget Kemmerer. I have read books one and two, but I still need to read the final book. So this one is A Curse So Dark and Lonely is the first book, and it is originally a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it, it spins off as the books come along. So this one is about a girl who gets kidnapped by um, <laughs> a royal courtier from a fantasy land and brought to this palace where the prince is cursed to turn into a beast at the end of every season unless he falls in love or gets the girl to fall in love with him that he has kidnapped from the mortal world and she's basically there as his last chance to beat this curse. I felt like that was too big of a gap for me between books two and three. I don't remember them enough to really be able to pick up book three without doing any rereads so here we are. The next one is also on hold for a different reason and that is Dead Endia by Hamish Steele. This is this the first book? No, this is not book one. This is book two, I think. The, the Broken Halo? Pretty sure that's book two. Anyway, um, there are meant to be three books in this series, um, but this one has had a lot of issues, not with the book, but with the publishing company. So uh, Nobro is the original uh, traditional publishers for this book, but there was real issues between them and the author. So he has now found a new home for the series and it is being reprinted. So books one and two will be reprinted. Yes, I will be buying them because I need every edition. Um, and then we'll finally be getting book three. But that's why it's on hold because this series has not been able to be finished because of the issues with the publishers. But this one is about a trans guy named Barney who goes to work at this haunted house attraction at a theme park with his dog and when he gets there he finds out that this haunted house is actually a portal to the different dimensions of hell and <laughs> there's lots of responsibility that comes with that. It's a really wacky and funny series. If you've seen Dead End on Netflix it was based on this graphic novel series. Now the next one is one that couldn't end up getting DNF'd if I read the next one and that is the Dimple and Rishi series by Sandhya Manon. This is a young adult contemporary romance series so it's, it's similar to adult romance series where each book is about a different couple and I read the first book which is uh, Dimple and Rishi when Dimple met Rishi I think um, and I read this a couple of years ago maybe even longer ago than that when I was really into young adult contemporary and I still want to read the other books or at least give one more book a go because I loved the first book so much but I am really not in in a young adult series mood so this could end up being one that gets DNF'd. Then we have the Dirty Air series by Lauren Asher. This is an adult romance series that is based on different Formula One race car drivers. So this one follows a different driver in each book and the romance that they have in the books. 
I really liked the first book, but the second book was just so bad. I hated it so much that it made me pause the series. So I still have two more books to read. I'm going to give it one more before I decide to completely DNF the series, but I'm kind of losing hope because I hated that second book so much. The next one is one that I will literally be closing out in the next few days. That is the Dreamland Billionaire series by Lauren Asher, which is the fine print is the first book. Um, this is a contemporary adult romance series. Again, they're kind of disconnected, but also slightly connected as well. Um, and this one is about three billionaire brothers whose grandfather is the owner of Dreamland, which is the fictional version of Disneyland. And he has passed away and has left a different condition in his will for each of his grandsons on how to inherit their shares in the company. Um, I just need to finish the final book. I'm reading it at the moment, so I will finally finish the series this year. <laughs> the next one is another potential DNF for me, and that is the Dumpling series by Judy Murphy. This is a contemporary YA series. It's not a romance series, really. Like, there is a romance element to it, but that's not the main focus. Each of these follows a different person from the original Dumplin book. So Dumplin is about a young plus size girl who her mother is a beauty queen or ex-beauty queen and runs this kind of beauty pageant every year in her small town and Dumplin decides to enter to kind of prove a point that anybody should be considered beautiful. I still have two more books officially part of this series. Sweet Pea is the middle grade that's kind of a spin-off from this series that I also haven't read but I, I'm not including it in the stats and I'm going to give it one more book but I'm just not sure if YA Contemporary is still for me. Then we have the Enchante series by Gita Trulis. The first book in the UK is called Enchante. I believe it is a different title in the US. This duology is set in France. The first book is just before the French Revolution. This one is about Camille, who is an orphan. She is trying to survive with her younger frail sister and very volatile brother. So she gets by by performing petty magic by turning like scraps of metal into coins but eventually these coins will turn back to metal so in that area people are knowing that these kids are scammers so she's to find a new way to get by and she decides to start trying to live a double life by sneaking into Versailles with the noblemen and conning them and of course that's very dangerous so I I adored the first book this is one that is a bit marmitey I've noticed that the average rating on Goodreads is not particularly high for this book so it's a little bit marmitey but I absolutely loved it and I really want to read book two but to give it the true justice it needs I I, I think I need to reread the first book which is why I've been putting it off but there's only one more book to read and I loved it we have another potential DNF series and that is the X Hex series by Erin Sterling the X Hex is honestly one of the worst books I've ever read like it just I don't know how how that book got published. So this is a fantasy romance series based around different women living in this college town in the in America and there is like a secret part of the college that is for witches only <laughs> um, and the first book is about one of the women basically putting a curse on this guy she had a fling with because he goes back to Wales um, and breaks up with her and she puts a curse on him that basically is like if he ever comes back he's cursed and he comes back because his family are the founders of the university and when he comes back this curse starts to seep into the magic of the university as well and they have to try and fix it <sighs> it's such a good concept but so poorly executed <laughs> but I kind of want to read book two to see if it gets any better because book two feels like it's going to be more romance focused and fantasy, fantasy focused and the fantasy element was the worst part of book one so I want to give it a go see how it is and then if that's also equally bad then I just won't read book three. The next one I'm not really sure if I want to admit this is on here but the Fifty Shades of Grey series by E.L. James. So I started listening to this because honestly, I just wanted to see how bad they were. Everyone's always been talking about them. And then the first two were on the like Audible sale one day. So I just got them for cheap and was like, I'm going to see how this is. So I read the first book and I read the second book. I'm trying to get through the third book, but it's just so bad. It's just so dry and bad and ridiculous for a romance. So... I don't know, maybe I'll end up DNFing that book eventually and it'll become a DNF series, but it's still on the list for now because I, I'm trying to slog through the third book. If you don't know what this series is, um, this is about a girl who meets a billionaire and he wants to date her, except he wants it to be strictly a dom-sub relationship. And it's about the back and forth that happens between them as he tries to convince her to be his sub. And she's like, I don't want that. I want a regular relationship with some kink in the bedroom and how they negotiate it. 
Now doing a complete 180, we have Front Desk by Kelly Yang. This is currently a four book series, but I believe there is a fifth book in the works. This is a contemporary middle grade series. Um, it is about a little girl whose family are working in a motel. Um, they work as the like motel managers and she helps them run it because basically they've been tricked. They are uh, Chinese immigrants and they've been tricked by the owner into the deal that they're doing. So she and her parents are just scraping by trying to run this motel, but they also allow illegal immigrants to hide there um, as long as the owner doesn't find out. It is an incredible first book and I immediately went and ordered the rest of the books available because I knew I needed to read them and I'd love them and I just have not got to them yet. Then we have Frost Heart by Jamie Littler. The first book being Frost Heart. Uh, mine is, is damaged because this cut out is just a bad idea, bad design. Um, so this is a fantasy middle grade. It is, oh, how do I, how do I explain it without spoilers? This one is about a young boy who lives in this kind of icy tundra place uh, and he lives in a camp and outside this camp are these snow creatures he is able to communicate with them but in this world being able to communicate with them is seen as a bad thing because people think they might be able to control you um, and to save his camp one day he communicates with them to get them to go away they want to banish him so he and his yeti caretaker are banished and he joins this traveling ship that goes from camp to camp for trading I liked the first book <laughs> it's just one where I think I read the first book before any other books were out so I just need to catch up. Then we have The Girl With All The Gifts by M.R. Carey. This is now a duology. Originally it was meant to only be one book and then he released a second book and I just have never picked it up. I gifted it to my dad for his birthday quite a few years ago now um, and I have now got the copy I gave him because he was going to get rid of it. Um, I think the reason I've been putting it off is because he said it's not as good as the first book and then I've also been developing this like extreme anxiety around apocalypse scenarios so maybe might not ever read this one it might end up being a DNF. Um, but the first book is about how there was a zombie apocalypse, but there seems to be these children who are technically zombies, but are incredibly, incredibly intelligent and not your regular zombie. And they're trying to study them to find out why that is and how this happened. Um, but then the base where they are being studied gets attacked. So this woman with a zombie child and another person escape and they're trying to make it to a survivor camp across across England I think um and the first book is amazing but my apocalypse anxiety is kind of putting me off reading the next book so this might end up being a DNF series then we have the Girls of Paper and Fire trilogy by Natasha Yang this one is purely I read the first book before the other two are out and so I've never picked up the other two because I need to reread um this is a YA fantasy it is about a world where there are three different casts. There are the demons who are at the top, humans at the bottom, and then in the middle, the hybrid human demon people. Um, and the demon king has this group of concubines that he gets every single year. And our main character gets selected as an additional one of them. Um, they're called the paper girls because she has golden eyes, but her mother was actually chosen to be a paper girl many years before. So she gets there and she wants to kind of investigate what happened to her mother because she's never heard from her since, but she also begins to fall in love with another one of the paper girls. It was really good, so I just need to finish it. Then we have the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series by Holly Jackson. This is a YA mystery thriller trilogy. I have read the first book and I loved this and I blew through it. And then I tried to read the second book and it just wasn't doing it for me. So I think I needed a break. Um, I will pick them up eventually, but I just <laughs> haven't picked it up recently. So this one, the first one is about um, a murder happened many years ago and it is believed that this teenage girl was murdered by her her boyfriend who I think then committed suicide but this girl in the book thinks that's not what happened and she decides to investigate what really happened for her EBQ. Um, it was amazing and I loved the first book but I just really struggled with the second book so I need to pick it up again. The next one I'm actually not sure if I will continue this series but that is the Heart of Thorns series by Brie Barton. The first book, Heart of Thorns, I got from Fairy Loot and it has a pretty low average rating on Goodreads but I really enjoyed it so I am intrigued to see where the rest of the series goes but I it could end up being a DNF if the second book is not as good as I remember the first book being. So this one is a fantasy world where only women are able to possess magic and our main character Mia is basically an assassin <laughs> who hunts down and kills women who are accused of using magic. 
and then one day her father forms an alliance with the royal family and she kind of has to leave that all behind but she discovers while she is there that she actually also has magic and things were never as she seemed or things were never as they seemed and she wants to try and investigate the true story of what happened and where this magic came from. The next one is definitely on hold that is the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. I believe she's on like a bit of a break and that's why we're having a little gap between uh, volume four and volume five but this is a YA contemporary romance series about two teenage boys who meet at school and fall in love. It is beautiful and if you've not seen the Netflix series you need to see it because it's amazing. Then it's the Isles of Storm and Sorrow series by Bex Hogan. This is a YA fantasy and it is like a pirate fantasy. In this world, there are 12 isles split into the east and the west. Her father is known as the Viper, who is the protector of the isles, but he's actually secretly very corrupt and dangerous. And the main character, Marianne, is trying to get away from him. And she also wants to become the new Viper. It is a pirate fantasy and it's amazing. I read books one and two and then book three came out and I just haven't picked it up yet because I don't want to let go of this series. Then we have the Kiss Quotient series by Helen Huang. This is an adult contemporary romance series. Um, again, quite disconnected. And these all follow different Asian Americans with neurodiversities. I have read books one and two and I haven't picked up book three because I hated book two so much. I found it incredibly problematic, basically. So I do need to pick up three and see if I want to read it, but it could be a DNF series for me. Then we have The Kissing Booth Trilogy by Beth Rekels absolute trash but it's my trash um i've read books one and two and i just need to read book three and i'm a bit nervous because book three came out after the third film and it's kind of a tie-in for the film rather than its own book so this book follows l evans who has a male best friend and the two of them decide to run a kissing booth as part of their school's fair and at this kissing booth she ends up kissing her best friend's older brother and sparks fly but she's not supposed to date him because best friend's older brother so they start secretly dating and this one is so terrible and so funny i just need to pick up that third book i don't think i really need to reread to know what's going on <laughs> then we have the looking thicket series by lucy lennox and may archer another one where it's trash but it's my trash this one is so bad <laughs> i think this is probably the worst series that lucy lennox has out there um it's another male male romance series and it is about this group of security guys all of these stories are centered around uh, a games console called the horn of glory and um, yeah that's basically it i've read the first one and it was so bad and i started trying to read the second one and it was also so bad but it was really funny because it was so bad and i just i just need to keep going i think there's only going to be three and they've all come out so i just have two more to go I'm losing light. This video is taking way longer than I thought it would. Um, then we have the Like a Charm series by Elle Nick Nickel. At the moment, I think it's a duology and the second book just came out like this week. So I need to read it. So this is a middle grade fantasy about Ramya. Uh, Ramya is able to see the magical folk in the world, which is quite unusual. Um, and she had a warning from her grandfather before they were separated. That was Beware the Sirens. And she is now trying to understand what that means and what is happening in Edinburgh, where she now lives. First book was amazing. So I just need to read that second book. Um, let's hope I read it soon. The next one is one that was quite a recent pickup for me. And that is Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. This, I think I read in December. It is a YA fantasy series. In our first book, there is our main character who is impersonating the princess she used to be the maid for using her magical pearls that change her appearance. And she is using this to steal from the wealthy because she is the daughter of fate and death. And she thinks that if she can raise enough money to escape and move to a different land, she'll be able to escape fate and death because they have said if she ever calls upon them, she will have to become their servant. It's so good. It's so good. And the second and third book aren't out yet. So this one is on hold. Then we have the Lock Tomb series by Tamsin Muir. This one, I... <sighs> I don't know why I like it. It's so weird, but I, I like it. It is a YA sci-fi series. I think it's YA, um, but it's really wacky and kind of fantasy at the same time. So this one is about this world of necromancers. Um, the kind of like God guy, um, like their leader has announced to the necromantic families, like the different houses of this universe, that he needs a new necromancer. And so they have to come to his planet for a competition and whoever wins gets to kind of become godlike and uh be his new necromancer and in this one we follow the ninth so um i think it's harrow the ninth is the 
leader of the current of this of this house and she needs Gideon uh from her house to be her cavalier I think it's called because each necromancer needs a cavalier so it's about the two of them going to this place um and there's a lot more background to it but essentially that's it and it's really wacky really weird you don't know what's going on most of the time but I really need to understand what's going on so I, I really want to read the next book and then we have one more book after that that's not out yet then we have the London Calling series by Alexis Hall. This is an adult contemporary romance series. Uh, this one is connected. It's about the same couple in each of the books. So the first one was boyfriend material and then we have husband material and then I think the last one is called father material. So um, the first book in the series is a fake dating romance. This one follows Luke and Oliver. Uh, Luke is the son of some very famous parents and so he is reluctantly also famous and a very scandalous picture is about to come out and ruin his reputation. So he finds this young man named Oliver to agree to be his fake boyfriend because Oliver is kind of perfect and so it's a fake dating romance to improve his reputation and it was cute and funny people compare it to red white and royal blue I'd say it's a little bit different and not as good but it's good enough that I, I want to read the rest of the books and the, the next book came out a few months ago I think so time to continue uh, then we have the London trilogy by Juno Dawson so this is clean meat market and wonderland and I'm not entirely sure if they do actually connect, but they are considered a trilogy. Um, and they're different contemporary books, YA contemporaries, about different kind of slightly dark topics. So Clean was focused around addiction and eating disorders. So that one was about a socialite who gets sent to a rehab because she is addicted to drugs. And it's about the different people she meets at this rehab. And then Meat Market is about a young girl who gets scouted to be a model and her journey through being in the modelling industry and how dark it is. Wonderland, I'm not actually sure what it is because they tend to have quite vague blurbs and I like to keep it that way. But that's the last one I need to read and I am planning on reading it very soon because I just adore Juno Dawson's writing. Then we have Love Boat Taipei, the duology, another YA contemporary romance one and I will be picking up the second book because I've already bought it. Um, so the first one is about a young girl getting sent to this summer school called Love Boat Taipei uh, because her parents want her to like reconnect with her culture but what they don't realise is that this summer school is notorious for being like a hookup romance dating thing um, and it's about the love triangle she ends up in while she's over there. Uh, really good but also kind of sad and the next book is about two of the side characters from the first book so I'm gonna read that but I don't know when. Then we have the Lunar Chronicles series by Marissa Meyer. This is a YA sci-fi slash fantasy series and I can't remember much about this but they are all different like fairy tale retellings I think. So um, I've read the first one which is Cinder which is a obviously like a Cinderella kind of retelling um and I still have three more books to go the next one is another potential dnf for me and that is the me before you trilogy by jojo moyes the reason this might be a dnf is because I didn't realize until after I read books one and two how problematic this series was um but I already own book three so I'm not sure whether I should just read it because I already own it and then like just not talk about it or if it's going to be one that I just dnf um but this one follows Lou who in the first book ends up working as a carer for a disabled gentleman um and about the romance that happens between them um but it's a lot sadder than it sounds <laughs> and um yeah I, I'm just not sure if I can continue this series or not but we'll see then we have the Mortal Engines Quartet by Philip Reeve this is like my favorite one of my favorite book series of all times and I've just not finished it because I don't want to let go of it so this one is also known as the Hungry City series um I read the first three books and I have one left to read um but this one is a sort of alternate universe where the cities of the world are now kind of moving like their trucks or like their tanks um and the bigger cities will attack the smaller cities and absorb them um and someone from London gets kind of thrown off with someone else and it's about them then exploring the planes and finding out kind of the secrets that are happening outside of these moving cities. Uh, loved it, adored it, just need to finish it. <laughs> then we have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Briggs um, and I have read the original trilogy and now there's three more books like a second arc and I haven't read any of those because there was a gap between the two arcs coming out as the first one got really popular and yeah I, I just need to read more. This one is about a world where there are secret pockets where magical children are kind of held in these time loops where they repeat day after day after day uh, to keep them protected from the people that are trying to hunt them down and kill them and each of these children will have like a different peculiarity or magical ability. Um, 
and in the first book the keeper of one of these um, groups of children gets kidnapped and they go to try and rescue her. Then we have another potential DNF series and that is the Noughts and Crosses series by Mallory Blackman. So I read the original, I think it's four books, um, when they first came out when I was really young. I want to say like under the age of 13 um, was when these books came out and I loved them. And then in recent years Mallory Blackman has released some more books that are kind of part of the series but it's more like a spin-off about the children of the people from the original series. And I have haven't read them yet and it's because I'm a bit nervous that I won't know what's going on without rereading the first set of books and I don't want to do that but this is an alternate universe where uh, race roles are reversed so in this universe white people are considered uh, lower than black people and it's about what life would be like if it was that way around and it is fascinating. Then we have the Off Campus series by L. Kennedy. This is another adult romance and it follows a different member of the um, Briar University hockey team in their romance stories. And I've actually read all of the four romances. And then there is a fifth book slash novella, which I believe is kind of like the epilogue book for each of the characters. So I just need to read that one. The next one is on hold and that is the Rebel Sky series by Ansi Lin. And this one is a young adult fantasy that leans to the younger end of young adult. It is about a Japanese inspired world with paper magic and in this world our main character is able to control the paper magic but is told to hide it all of her life but when the place that she's living gets attacked a man comes and says I can rescue you and I can teach you how to use this paper magic come with me and she does and a lot happens after that. I adored the first book and I cannot wait for more books to come out in this series. Then we have the Saga series by Brian K. Vaughan, which I think has 12 volumes at this point. It's a graphic novel series. It's, they're very thin. Um, and I've read volumes one and two. I think 10 or 11 are available for purchase at the moment. So I have some catching up to do. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't know when that's going to happen, but hopefully I will catch up in the series. Then another big one for me is A Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. So I've read the first three books in this series and I think I have another eight or nine to go. Um, might be more than that, might be less, I'm not entirely sure. Um, this one, if you don't know, is about a group of three siblings who get orphaned after their family home burns down. And in the first book, they are sent to live with this distant uncle who is very creepy and is definitely trying to get their money. Um, and it's about them trying to escape him and how he tries to get them in each in each book. Um, it's really, really fun. I just I just lost the books for a while. I miss I misplaced them when I moved. <laughs> and so my read of the series got paused. So I need to pick those back up again. Then we have the Shades of Magic series by V. Schwab, which I'm counting as a trilogy for now because she hasn't even announced the others, although I know it's certainly going to be a six book series with two, two three book arcs. Um, I read the first book, need to continue, and I can't really remember what the first book is, but I know it is a fantasy world where there's different versions of London that are connected, except one version of London has been disconnected, um, and there are these people who are able to travel between them, and one of them is Kel, our main character. Then we have the Shameless series by Rosie Dannon. This one I think is a duology at the moment. Don't think there's any more books planned for this, but there could be. Um, this is an adult contemporary romance series. And the first book is The Roommate. And then we have The Intimacy Experiment. And these ones are sex positive romance books. Love the first book. And the second book only came out recently, so haven't read it yet. Then we have another potential DNF series, and that is A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. This is a YA fantasy series about a world where gorgons and mermaids and sirens all exist in our world, kind of similar to how Wednesday works, um, if you've seen that Netflix series. Um, and I can't remember much about it, but I didn't love the first book, so I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to read the second one. And then we have A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. Read book one, really struggled to get into book two, but I want to give it another go because I feel like my reading tastes have matured since I started this series. Um, so I think that leaves six books. I can't remember if that includes the ones that aren't released yet. But I'm reluctant to start reading this again because are we ever going to get more books in this series? Who knows? Um, if you didn't know, this book is about... Uh, I mean, it's the Game of Thrones series. <laughs> I don't know how to summarise it really, but it's it's sort of like a political manoeuvring series, basically, historical fantasy. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> 
Then we have the Spanish Love Deception duology. Uh, this is another adult contemporary romance series and they're slightly disconnected. So the first book is a Spanish Love Deception where a woman who has moved from Spain to America needs to go back to Spain for a wedding and she finds out that her ex-boyfriend who is the reason she fled Spain for America is going to be there with his fiance. So she decides to take her colleague who she hates to pretend to be her boyfriend so she doesn't look as bad at the wedding. I loved it, it's a bit of a Marmite book but I really liked it and I'm looking forward to reading the second book, it just only came out a few months ago so I haven't read it yet. Another potential DNF series and that is The Spinster Club by Holly Bourne, so that starts with Am I Normal Yet? Um, it is a YA contemporary series and that's why I may be DNFing it because again not sure if I'm as into YA contemporary as I used to be. Um, this one is uh, about a group of friends who call themselves the spinster club because they believe they're going to grow up to be spinsters uh, following each of them with their different struggles in teenagerhood and that's another reason why I think this could be a DNF series for me because it's not exactly like something I can relate to anymore and when it comes to why contemporary where it's meant to be like a relatable book I can struggle um, but I did really enjoy the first book so maybe I'll continue it. Another potential DNF series, and that is the Stags series by M.K. Bennett. Now, when I read the first book, I I liked it, but I didn't love it. And I'm kind of shocked it's now part of a five book series. But this is a YA thriller series, and they're usually quite short books. So this one is about a girl who gets a scholarship to go to this uh, exclusive private school. And at this exclusive private school, there's this elite group called like the Stags. And it's about her dealings with them. I can't give you too much more information because it's kind of spoilers um, and the tension is good. I thought the characters weren't great but it, it's enough that like the cliffhanger at the end of book one could have been left there as a typical like cliffhanger thriller ending but because there's now more books in the series I do want to read more to see where it goes but I'm not convinced I'm gonna enjoy it enough to read all five books. Then we have the Supernatural Investigation series by B.B. Alston, which starts with Amari and the Night Brothers. Amari and the Great Game came out, I think it was in September, so I haven't linked it up yet, but I need to. And this is a middle grade fantasy series. So this one follows Amari, whose brother had this kind of mysterious job and he then passes away. But after he passes away, she finds out that he nominated her to become part of the supernatural investigation group that he was in so she then goes to join this um team for training basically to become part of the supernatural investigation team and it is pretty cool it's like a magic school series and i loved book one so i yeah i'm really looking forward to reading book two this one's a bit of a shocker for some people but if you've been here for a while you'll know about this one the throne of glass series by sarah j maas so um this one if you don't know it's a YA fantasy series following um an assassin who is released from prison in order to compete to be what is it to be like the king's assassin I think um who knows I mean that's the first book but it goes completely off from there anyway um but yeah I just haven't read Kingdom of Ash the final book because it's like a thousand pages long and I didn't like Tower of Dawn and I need to reread that to read the final book and that kind of puts me off reading the series so it's just one more book I need to read we're on the home stretch people <laughs> then we have another one that's on hold that is the villain series by V. E. Schwab starting with Vicious and then we have Vengeful and then we're getting a final one I think it's called Victorious and um this one is a adult fantasy uh, where two guys who are best friends at college discover that if you have a near-death experience there is a chance you could then develop this like extraordinary power and they manage to give themselves magical powers but one of them goes complete like religious extremist and decides that only god should be allowed to do these things and that everyone with these magical powers needs to be eliminated and starts trying to hunt them down um and the other guy is like hmm maybe not and um so it's a very morally gray one though which it doesn't sound like it would be but it is it's a morally gray story absolutely adored it um this is on hold because we're waiting for book three Another one that is on hold, but only briefly because the next book is coming out soon, and that is the Wayward Children series by Shauna Maguire. This is a YA fantasy series where um, different children find these doors to alternative universes, and these universes can be like super chaotic or super ordered, and 
like super logical or super fantastical um, and these are meant to be like their perfect worlds and the this series follows children that have come back from those worlds and how they deal with that afterwards and for the most part the series follows this school where the children are sent if they want to go back to their worlds but they can't. Another one on hold is the Wilmot Sisters series by Chloe Lees. I believe this is only going to be a duology because I think there's only two sisters but the first one is Two Wrongs Make a Right and we're just waiting for the second one um, and it is a contemporary romance series about two sisters going on their romantic exploits. We have another potential DNF one and that is the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. This is an adult fantasy series and it is based in Russian folklore. I, I kind of like the first book but I found it a bit dry and a bit slow so I'm going to reread it to see if I want to read the second book but if I don't enjoy my reread then I will be DNFing the series. Then we have the witchy graphic novels by Ariel Slamet Rias. I think there's only going to be two and I've read book one but I just need to read book two and this is a fantasy series and it is about your hair length indicating your power but if your hair is too long it's considered a bad thing because you're too powerful and in this world um, you have to pass a test at a certain age and basically if you are a certain strength you'll be kind of recruited into the police force and this girl decides that she doesn't want to do that and is trying to run away so i liked book one book one was definitely a setup book though um but i'm really intrigued to see where it's going and i do want to read book two so then we have the wranglestone geology by darren charlton i have read book one book two only came out last year so i haven't read it yet and there was also a big gap between book one coming out and book two i think it was like three years and that's why i haven't immediately picked up book two uh, but this is really it's an apocalypse book i can read <laughs> so this is about there has been a zombie apocalypse and we have a group of people living on these islands in a lake and throughout the summer they are completely safe because the zombies can't swim but in the winter the lake freezes over and the zombies can walk across so they have to protect themselves and just before it freezes over our main character accidentally lets a zombie come across on a boat uh, with a human and he as his punishment is sent with his crush <laughs> to the mainland uh, to hunt down zombies so <laughs> It's actually a romance and it's actually more romantic than it is apocalyptic and I really enjoyed it and that's probably why um, and book two is all about the secrets and I, I do really want to read it. And finally, I can't remember if this one's on hold or not, but we have The Wind Trilogy by James Tinian, another graphic novel one. So I've read books one and two, I just need to read book three, and I don't think book three is out yet, so this could be an on hold one. This is about a magical world where um, there is a human city that is all kind of walled in and it's illegal in the city to be fae and our main character is fae <laughs> he's a fairy and he is being hidden by the lady looking after him but she gets word that there's someone coming who will be able to hunt him down and so she's trying to sneak him out of the city to get him to safety and he ends up getting stuck out with the prince of this city who is trying to also sneak out because he doesn't agree with these rules and he's trying to find the rebels to join them and things happen. <laughs> I really really like this series and I cannot wait for book three. So oh, this might be like the longest I've ever recorded for one video. That was almost all 66 book series. I skipped a couple because I didn't want to talk about them because they're probably going to be DNF'd or I, I decided while I was looking at them I was going to DNF them so I skipped them. Um, but yeah that's a lot. I'm not very good at finishing series, really not very good at finishing series. I think it's because of the reread that I often have to do that puts me off. But this year, one of my priorities is to clear out series where I definitely like already own the books. There's no excuse for that. Like it helps me clear my TBR backlog and it helps me finish series. So I really need to get better at that. So <laughs> let me know in the comments, how are you doing? Are you good at finishing series? Are you not? Do you have as many series to finish as me? Um, please reassure me if you do. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more content from me. All of my social media links are in the description below. And if you'd like to leave me a comment to let me know you're here, leave me a fairy emoji in the comments below. Thank you again for watching. Bye.